Good morning and welcome to the California Department of Water Resources virtual public hearing for the Delta Conveyance Project Draft Environmental Impact Report. It's 9 o'clock a.m. and we will wait just a couple minutes to get everyone time to join the meeting. Thank you. It's now 9.02 a.m. and we will go ahead and get started. Again, this is a virtual public hearing for the Department of Water Resources, or DWR, Delta Conveyance Project Draft Environmental Impact Report, or EIR. My name is Jennifer Piggott, and I will serve as the facilitator today. Thank you for joining us. We are interpreting today's hearing into Spanish and Chinese, specifically Cantonese, and I will walk you through how to get into the language channels. Then I will ask our interpreters to share that information in both Spanish and Cantonese. You can listen to today's hearing in English by staying in this main channel or joining the English channel. You do this by clicking the interpretation button on your screen and selecting English. If you do not join the English channel, you will still hear the meeting in English and have an opportunity to make a verbal comment, but you will not hear Spanish or Cantonese comments interpreted into English. If you would like to listen to the presentation and comments in Spanish, click the interpretation button at the bottom of your Zoom screen and select Spanish. If you would like to listen to the presentation and comments in Cantonese, click the interpretation button at the bottom of your screen and select Chinese. Joining us today to provide Spanish interpretation is Reina Rodriguez. She will now give instructions on how to join the Spanish channel. Reina. Hola, muy buenos días a todos y bienvenidos a la reunión. El día de hoy tenemos interpretación al español disponible. Para seleccionar interpretación en español, favor de seleccionar el icono que parece un mundo abajo de su pantalla. Después de seleccionar el icono que parece un mundo, puede hacer uh, clic a su lenguaje de preferencia. En este caso va a ser español. Y también le invito a seleccionar la opción de poner el audio original en silencio o mute original audio. De esta manera solamente escuchará la presentación en su lenguaje de preferencia y no escuchará un eco en inglés. Si usted desea hacer cualquier comentario, lo, puedo hacer, lo puede hacer usted en su idioma y aquí estaremos el día de hoy para ayudar a interpretarlo al inglés. Si usted prefiere eh, escuchar esta conversación en español pero no tiene el... Um, la función de Zoom en su teléfono o en su computadora, le invito en este momento a apuntar el siguiente número. Usted después de apuntar el número va a colgar esta llamada de Zoom o se va a desconectar del audio y va a llamar al siguiente número. Favor de llamar uh, para la línea de español por teléfono al 602-580-9655. Y usted va a ingresar el código de acceso 8833787. Una vez más, la línea de conferencia para llamar al español si no tiene la aplicación de Zoom es el 602-580-9659 con el código de, de acceso 8833787. Y de esta manera también va a poder participar. Con eso, volvemos una vez más a Jennifer. Jennifer, we'll turn back to you. Thank you, Reina. Also joining us today to provide Cantonese translation is Nathan Huang. He will now give instructions on how to join the Cantonese channel. Nathan? Thank you, Jennifer. Chinese 首先單擊的是更多,亦都是右下角的三個點 
。咁啊，再一步讲，如果你想听嘅只系口译员而唔系英文原音嘅话咧，再点击 Mute Original Audio， 关闭原本嘅声音频道。咁啊，入咗会场嘅每一个人咧，必须要选择自己嘅一个语言。即尽管你系想听英文嘅话咧，你都要选取英文频道，唔好保留喺默认嘅关闭状态。咁啊，如果你系通过我哋今日嘅 conference line 打电话入嚟，想进行粤语嘅发言、广东话嘅评论嘅话咧，我哋嘅号码系六零五三一三五八一四六零五三一三五八一四，输入号码六五九八四八六五九八四八可以登录喺里边同我哋进行粤语嘅发言，以便我哋嘅口译员将你嘅中文发言传译翻英文俾我哋嘅讲者听。唔该晒 ，Thank you, Jennifer. That's the instruction. Thank you, Nathan. We will now open the language channels. I will pause a moment to allow attendees to join the language channel of their choice. We are running this hearing using Zoom webinar, which mutes all participants when not speaking. When it's your turn to make a comment, we will ask you to unmute your microphone. In this webinar, only DWR representatives and I will appear on camera. We are recording and transcribing this hearing. If you would like to turn captions on or off, click the live transcript icon on the bottom of your screen and click the enable option. If you experience technical difficulties this morning and need to dial in to the hearing, the call in number is 1-877-853-5555. Four seven. The webinar ID is eight four five six five four one one four nine three, and the passcode is zero eight three four seven one. This information has been posted in the chat box. If you need to reach a member of the project team for technical support, please contact Delta Conveyance C O N V E Y. A N C E at water. dot C A. dot G O V. We will conduct this public hearing in two parts. First, D W R will provide a brief overview of the Delta Conveyance Project and draft E I R. Then we will have a facilitated comment session for you to provide verbal comments on the draft E I R for the official comment record. There will not be a question and answer session today, and DWR will not be answering your comments at this hearing. Your comments will be addressed in the final EIR. If you have questions about how to find information in the draft EIR, please email Delta Conveyance Comments at water. dot ca. dot gov. This email address has also been posted in the chat. Each person will have up to three minutes to make a comment. To allow us to hear from as many people as possible, each person can make one verbal comment today. We will receive as many comments as time allows. If you are not called on to provide a verbal comment today, you may provide a comment in writing, via email, or regular mail, or the comment form on the draft EIR website. If you do make a verbal comment today, You can also mail or email comments until the close of the comment period. We will share the mail, email, and website address for submitting comments throughout today's hearing. All comments are treated equally, whether received verbally, via email, or in writing. Now, I would like to introduce Carrie Buckman with DWR. She is the Delta Conveyance. Pro Project Environmental Program Manager, and will give a short overview presentation. Carrie, over to you. Thank you. I want to start by thanking everyone for participating today. I know that that everyone has many things to be doing, and I appreciate you taking the time to be here and participate in this process. I wanted to start by talking a little bit about why we're considering this project. The past three years of extreme drought have really emphasized that our climate is changing, and and that we need to be planning for it, which we knew. But this has really been a, a good reminder and an emphasis that we need to start planning ahead. So as we look to the future, we expect that there will be less snow and more rain as the climate warms, and that rain will fall over shorter and less predictable durations. 
We also expect that we'll have more frequent drought and flood cycles, so more extreme events. So because of these changes in precipitation, what we want to do with the Delta Conveyance Project is capture water when it's available, knowing that it will be available less often and over shorter periods. So adding points of diversion and creating flexibility creates a more resilient and flexible state water project in the face of unstable future conditions. So that led to the purpose and objectives for the Delta Conveyance Project. So our fundamental reason for considering this project is to modernize the Aging State Water Project or SWP infrastructure in the Delta to restore and protect the reliability of SWP water supplies in a cost-effective manner consistent with the state's water resilience portfolio. Generally, we want the State Water Project to be able to continue to function in the face of multiple challenges, and those challenges are reflected in our objectives. We want to consider ways to address sea level rise and climate change, modern or minimize, minimize water supply disruption due to seismic risk, protect water supply reliability, and provide operational flexibility to improve aquatic conditions. So I wanted to go over the proposed project and alternatives. The proposed project in the draft EIR is identified as the Bethany Reservoir Alternative. And this is a different alternative than we proposed in the notice of preparation. Part of the process in CEQA is to consider alternatives that could reduce significant environmental impacts. And we found that the Bethany alternative has that potential. So we did shift to a new proposed project. The Bethany, the Bethany alignment, as you can see in the map on the right, starts with two intakes in the North Delta. It has a 6,000 CFS capacity and the water would be diverted in the North Delta and moved by tunnel along a route that follows closer to I-5, uh, shown in purple, and then moves a little bit more directly to the south, shown in orange, to a new pump station. That pump station pumps the water from the tunnel up into the existing Bethany Reservoir on the California Aqueduct. The alternatives follow different alignments, a central or an eastern alignment, and they have different capacities of 3,000, 4,500, 6,000, or 7,500 CFS. And because of those different capacities, they could have one, two, or three intakes in the North Delta. So similar to Bethany, they would divert water in the North and move water by tunnel to the South, but the alignment that they would move that water is different. Additionally, the facilities in the South Delta are quite different. So the, the, there would be a pump station that would move water from the tunnel up to the surface, and then a southern forebay in between that pump station and the existing bank's pumping plant. Uh, because we have two pumping plants close together, we need that regulating storage. And that facility, that forebay is about a thousand acres. And we don't need that forebay in the Bethany alternative because we only have one pump station. And that really is the difference in, in a lot of the potential impacts of those two projects or those two alternatives. Uh, then the, the last alternative I wanted to talk, to talk about on this page is the no project alternative. So this investigates the likely conditions if a project were not implemented. And that includes reasonably foreseeable changes in existing conditions and potential alternate actions that may be taken absent a project. So it looks at what agencies would do if state water project supplies continue to decline into the future. So that could include actions such as increased conservation, recycling, or desalination. So we are now in the draft EIR public review period, and we have prepared this draft EIR to comply with the requirements of the California Environmental Quality Act, or CEQA. The draft EIR evaluates the effects of the proposed project. It examines a range of feasible alternatives that meet the project's objectives, and it identifies mitigation measures to lessen potentially significant impacts. It is available for review and comment through October 27th, and all comments submitted on the draft will be considered by DWR, and we will respond to all substantive comments in the final EIR that will help inform decision makers on how to move forward. We wanted to go over a few tips for commenting. Uh, we really would like people to engage and comment at this point to help make sure that the draft EIR best represents the potential environmental impacts. So this opportunity, this comment period is an opportunity to refine the analysis of environmental impacts and the development of feasible mitigation. It is the best way to make the lead agency aware of concerns related to the environmental analysis. 
and it's an opportunity to address concerns related to any potential direct or indirect impacts to the physical environment. And a few thoughts about effective comments. They are concise, focusing on the environmental analysis in the draft EIR. They relate to the project's potential for impacts on the physical environment. They identify the specific part of the draft EIR at issue, and they include supporting evidence or facts such as references or citations to specific websites. Now I'm handing this back to you, Jen, to get the comment period started. Great. Thank you, Carrie. That concludes our presentation. We will now move into the second portion of the meeting and take verbal comments on the draft EIR. As a reminder, you will have three minutes to make your comment, and you will only be called on once to make a comment. Additionally, you may not cede your comments to another participant please make your comment or submit in writing. To assist with timing, we will display a countdown timer on the screen. When three minutes have passed, I will give a verbal notice and your mic will be muted shortly after. At the start of your comment, please state your full name for the record. We appreciate your assistance in adhering to the three minute time limit so we can allow DWR to hear from as many people as possible today. A court reporter is transcribing the verbal comments received today. All substantive comments will be responded to in the final EIR. We do ask that you speak slowly to ensure your comments can be captured by both the court reporter and translated by our interpreters today. Please be respectful of everyone who provides comments during today's meeting. You each have a unique and valued perspective and no one comment is considered more important than another. Comments that are directed to or about another commenter are not in line with the intent of today's meeting and will not be allowed. Finally, any speaker that uses inappropriate language may be placed on mute or removed from the online platform. There may not be enough time to hear from all the commenters today. Currently, we have 197 people participating in today's meeting. Following this hearing and until October 27th of 2022, comments can be submitted in writing. All comments are weighted equally, whether shared verbally today or sent in an email, letter, or through the project website. Comments can be emailed to delta conveyance comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR Attention Delta Conveyance Office, P.O. Box 942836, Sacramento, California, 94236-000. This information has also been posted into the chat. Before we begin our comment session, we will take a few minutes to allow our interpreters to get settled to begin comment interpretation for participants listening in Spanish or Cantonese. We will be back in about two minutes. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. I have checked with both our Spanish interpreter and our Cantonese interpreter, and we currently do not have anyone requesting to make a verbal comment in Spanish or Cantonese. If you would like to make a comment, please raise your hand by using the raise hand option on the screen located at the bottom of your Zoom platform or pressing star nine if you're on the phone. Please remember, we're doing simultaneous interpretation, so please speak slowly and clearly. Remember, you will have three minutes to make your comment, and you will only be called on once to make a comment. Okay, our first speaker is Mary Alyssa Rainser, and I do apologize if I mispronounce anyone's name today. Mary, I'm going to ask you to unmute to allow you to make your comment. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. You have three minutes. Perfect. Uh, good morning. My name is Mary Alyssa Rancier, and I am here on behalf of Associated General Contractors of California. We are here in so strong support of the governor's plan to protect the reliability of our state and local water supplies by fixing the water distribution network through the Delta. 
The release of the environmental impact review documents represents progress in moving the Delta conveyance project forward. The Bethany alignment is a step in the right direction, attempting to kill off old conflicts of the past while still pushing a project that is sufficient to protect water supplies and the economy that relies on reliable water system. Investments in our uh, water infrastructure now will pay dividends in the future as we can secure our water supplies and protect hundreds of thousands of regional jobs that depend on the stability of this water source. The proposed Delta, Delta conveyance project will engineer a system that better captures water when it is abundant so it's available during periods of extreme drought. We're eager to work with the administra administration to move this project forward and see it through to completion. All right, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, our next speaker is Manny Leon, who will be followed by Stephen White, William Martin, and then Aaron Woolley. Manny, I'm going to ask you to uh, to unmute. Hello. Uh, uh, can, may, can you hear me now? Y yes. Go oh, ahead. Sorry. You have there three minutes. Thank you. Um, thank you. Hi. My name is Manny Leon, and I'm here on behalf of the California Alliance for Jobs. We represent over 2,000 heavy construction companies and 80,000 union construction workers and advocate for responsible investments in public infrastructure projects. We strongly support Governor Newsom's Delta Conveyance Project. More than two thirds of Californians rely on water distribution systems that is outdated and vulnerable to the threats of climate change and natural disasters. California has changed significantly in the last 60 years, and this system is no longer suited for our current hydrological conditions. Droughts will be drier, last longer, while rainy years will be wetter and carry increased risk of flooding. Our current water distribution infrastructure is incapable of handling the changes associated with this new water future. A modernized Delta conveyance will improve our ability to capture and move water during and after storm events for better, to better prepare for future dry years. It will also fortify our infrastructure and withstand the hazards posed by earthquakes and floods. We strongly support this proposal. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, our next speaker is Stephen White. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. You have three minutes. Okay, my name is Stephen White, and I'd like to draw some similarities, some historical context between this project and the peripheral canal that was rejected resoundingly by voters in 1977 when it was first proposed. Um, the canal vote was actually a couple years later, uh, but the, the three tunnels they're proposed in this project are very similar to the peripheral canal in terms of their, uh, their overall direction and their purpose. Uh, unfortunately, the, the three tunnels uh, projects uh, are so similar that we'll just take the best Bethany alternative. You're, you're gonna take 6,000 cubic feet of water per second from the Sacramento River, dump it into a tunnel, and divert it to the southern end of the, of the delta, which is basically the peripheral canal. Um, unfortunately, our rivers are already being diverted to death, <laughs> kind of death by 10,000 diversions. Uh, they're heavily overdrawn. If you look at the environmental research letters uh, published in 1914, they look at the, um, the overdrafting in all of California's rivers. And many of these rivers are overdrafted eight to 10 times more water they can possibly carry. Uh, the, the idea of doing more of this is patently absurd. Uh, a, uh, a purpose of this, a one large purpose of this is to send this water to the Central Valley for uh, irrigation for agriculture. And uh, one of the biggest crops down there now is almonds and pistachios. And um, a Pacific Policy Institute study in uh, June of last year showed that they are one of the highest ranking uh, water dependent crops at 4.49 acre feet per acre of crop, uh, 4.49 acre feet of water per acre of crop. Uh, yet in the, in the face of that, they've increased the stands of pistachios and nuts by 51% from 2010 to 2020. That's just unsupportable. It's it's crazy. Um, if if you look at uh, the the consequences here, 
you draw a whole bunch of water out of the out of the bay and you're going to increase salinity you're going to have uh, toxic algal blooms which we've already seen to devastating uh, example in the past couple of weeks uh, increased concentrations of uh, toxins and effluents uh, agricultural runoff uh, pollutants from wastewater uh, treatment plants that can't be rinsed away because there's no fresh water to do it. This project it, it should be converted to something that looks at water reclamation. We should be investing billions of dollars into water reclamation, not taking the existing water out of the rivers. That's it. Right. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, our next commenter is William Martin. Mr. Martin, I'm going to ask you to uh, unmute. Thank you. My name is William Martin. I'm a San Francisco resident, a volunteer activist with the Sierra Club, and a Delta recreationist. The recreation section of the DEIR fails to address a key issue, water quality. No recreationist is going to enjoy a Delta with poor water quality. All of the alternatives in the DEIR substantially increase water exports from the Delta, on average by approximately 500,000 acre feet per year including significant increases in water diversions in dry and critically dry years of 200 to 300,000 acre feet per year, as shown in table ES-4. Water quality in the Delta and throughout the Bay Delta estuary is already in terrible shape. Exporting even more water will worsen it further. Water skiers, wakeboarders, and swimmers won't want to enter water that is polluted or covered in harmful algae. Fishermen won't want to fish in this water, especially if, as expected, the current greatly reduced populations of fish continue to decline further. Wildlife viewers won't see the once abundant populations of birds and other creatures. The recreation section must be thoroughly revised to reflect the significant reduction in flows through the, redel through the delta as a result of the increased diversions. On page 16-33, the DEIR quotes the Delta Reform Act of 2009, which calls for the co-equal goals of increased water reliability and an enhanced Delta ecosystem. No statement in the recreation section addresses enhancing the Delta ecosystem. All the best available science says the same thing. The Delta needs more flows, not less. The entire DEIR needs to be thoroughly revised to address how the operations of the project will increase flows throughout the Bay Delta estuary, not reduce them. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our next few speakers are Aaron Woolley, Kaso Willey, and Amber McDowell. Aaron, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Good morning. Um, thank you for the opportunity to comment today. My name is Erin Woolley. I'm a policy advocate with Sierra Club California, and I'm here on behalf of our more than half a million members and supporters statewide to provide comments on the draft EIR for the Delta Conveyance Project. First, I would like to respectfully request that DWR extend the public comment period to allow additional time for review and public feedback on the DEIR. The environmental impact report is an important step in evaluating the feasibility of the proposed project, its alternatives, and their environmental consequences while creating greater visibility, transparency, and public engagement. It is fundamental that all stakeholders have adequate time to engage in this process. The draft EIR totals roughly 20,000 pages, including technical appendices. Given the size of this document, a, com a comparative amount of time should be provided to allow for grassroots organizations and community members to review and provide meaningful feedback on the document. I respectfully request that DWR extend the comment period and provide an additional 90 days for public review. Second, I would like to urge DWR to ensure that the proposed alternatives and analysis reduce reliance on the Delta consistent with the Delta Reform Act and the State Water Board's proposed update to the Bay Delta Water Quality Control Plan. Lack of freshwater flows moving through the Delta have worsened in recent years, causing high water temperatures, violation of Delta salinity standards and proliferation of harmful algal blooms in the Delta. These effects have severe consequences for aquatic species and Delta communities. The State Water Board is currently working on an update to the Bay Delta Water Quality Control Plan, which would likely require increased flows through the Delta, 
reducing the water that's available for diversion. Likewise, the Delta Reform Act established a state policy of reducing reliance on the Delta. However, the draft EIR <clears throat> shows that the Delta conveyance project would divert more water from the Delta than the state water project currently does, and even more so during critically dry periods when this ecosystem is at greatest risk of HABs and other water quality impacts. To be consistent with the Delta Reform Act and the State Water Board's proposed update to the Bay Delta Plan, DWR must analyze alternatives that would increase Delta outflows and reduce exports. I urge DWR to include an alternative that would achieve the same water supply reliability goals while reducing reliance on Delta exports by pursuing regional and local projects to increase water conservation, efficiency, and additional demand reduction measures. Thank you again for the opportunity to comment. Thank you for your comments. Okay, our next speaker is Keso Willie. I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Good morning, I'm Keso Willie, staff attorney for Save California Salmon. Firstly, I also wanted to address, address concern over the allotted time given for this comment period. On paper, 90 days to respond to a draft EIR may seem like plenty of time. However, in practice, it is not so. Given the length of the document and the depth that interested parties want to put into the examination of the DAR documents, allotting 90 days for interested parties to review such an extensive and detailed document is not nearly enough time. Larger organizations may have the ability and resources to review the DAR than NGOs will have, and small NGOs will have more resources than the average person. But to spend the time we would like to mean, meaningfully review the documents, much of our time would meet, need to be dedicated solely to the DAR. However, many do not have the resources to dedicate most of our time to this because our organizations are also working on many other projects. I've heard from multiple organizations that because they were busy with summer events and other projects, they were unable to fully begin studying the DAR until this month. The document is so large that there are also several organizations trying to organize and work together to ensure the entirety of the DAR is reviewed. The Delta Conveyance Project is one that has been decades long in the making and is one of the most, if not the most controversial water projects in the state. And I like to suggest DAR consider an extension of the comment period for the benefit of numerous inter interested parties. Next, I wanted to address the concern over the threat this project poses for tribal cultural resources. All DIR, draft DIR or DIR alternatives result in the disturbance of cultural resources, including historic tribal villages and mounds from before European contact, which cannot be adequately mitigated. The DAR explicitly states the project would result in significant impact on Delta tribal cultural resources. This is unacceptable. Tribes and tribal members deserve to have their cultural history and places preserved. California has a history of purposeful erasure of California's indigenous cultures and traditions, and to move forward with this project would mean once again, the state is taking affirmative action to harm indigenous Californians. To move forward with this project would just be another act of cultural genocide from the state of California against Native Americans. And DWR needs to re-examine the impact of this project and how it will impact tribal cultural resources and consider that it should consider the type of re relationship it wants to have with tribal communities in the future. Lastly, this project will result in significant impact on the Delta and possibly the San Francisco Bay, Trinity and Sacramento rivers, toxic, toxic algae blooms and fish runs at a time when our rivers and Delta and Bay are in crisis. This is much more than a construction project and the impact to cultural resources and Delta ecosystem is far too great to move forward with this project. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, folks, as a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of today's meeting. If you would like to be added to the speaker list, please raise your hand or press star nine. Our next speaker is Amber McDowell. Amber, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Hi, my name is Amber McDowell. I'm a Delta farmer in Walnut Grove. My comment today will focus more on the no, no project alternative. This tunnel project will take almost two decades of construction and billions of dollars before it's in operational mode. This tunnel does not create any new water and does not store any water, but will permanently destroy the environmental, our historic communities and the economy. If water is unavailable, that tunnel will be empty. 
and no benefit to the communities that are looking to use it will be there. Specifically in the groundwater chapter, and I assume in several other chapters, the no project option identifies local alternatives in which the EIR states that with most of them, there will be no impacts to the Delta or to those local communities that implement them. These options would actually help those communities with local control, an economic boost with increased jobs and job security, and actual water sustainability for themselves to be reliant. In addition, these alternatives would be cheaper to construct, be in operation sooner, and be more resistant to natural disasters, including earthquakes, uh, water quality, salinity, and also reliability for those local communities. I suggest that this project move forward with the no project option and take the money that they're using right now and, in, and use it in those local communities to help boost those recycling, conservation stuff that they are trying to implement right now and help them get those sustained faster for them to actually have water. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right, our next speaker is Rebecca Allen. Rebecca, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Was that able to unmute? Yes, Rebecca, we can hear you. Go ahead, you have three minutes. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Rebecca Allen and I am the Tribal Historic Preservation Director with the United Auburn Indian Community of the Auburn Rancheria. The UAIC is in strong opposition to the Delta Conveyance Project. We are in support of water solutions for the state of California, but the current proposed project will, will create irreparable harm to the Delta as a tribal cultural landscape and tribal associated resources. In a good faith effort, we have extensively consulted with DWR on the Delta Conveyance Project since February, 2001. In each consultation meeting, UAIC has made their position against the project known to DWR and explained the devastating effects that this project would pose on our cultural and ecological resources. The Delta and Delta ecology is tied to the UAIC and other area tribes through cultural stories, important places and people, cultural materials, and regional pre-colonial and post-colonial history. The state of California's deliberate actions through this proposed Delta conveyance project, despite Governor Newsom's acknowledgement of California's historic and continued genocide of California Native Americans and state actions towards conservation, such as the 30 by 30 conservation strategy and racial, racial equality are in direct opposition to this project. UAIC views the Delta Conveyance Project as a continuation of California's state-driven policy of cultural and ecological genocide of California Native American peoples. The DEIR has several critical shortcomings. We also request that DWR extend the DEIR comment period for at least 90, day, 90 days because of the weightiness of these issues. In the future, we are willing to discuss uh, and consult with DWR on tenable and future water solutions, but those must be based in traditional ecological knowledge that is integrated with sound science-based decisions. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am now going to check with our interpreters to see if we have anyone in the Spanish or the Cantonese channels wishing to make a verbal comment. Reina and Nathan, would you please raise your hand if you have anyone in your channels wishing to make a verbal comment in Spanish or Cantonese? Okay, thank you. I received a message from both of our interpreters. We do not have anyone wishing to make a verbal comment at this time in Spanish or Cantonese. Again, ladies and gentlemen, um, we have plenty of time remaining today to hear your verbal comments. We ask that you use the raise hand feature located at the bottom of your Zoom platform to raise your hand, or if you're a call-in user, press star nine to raise your hand. Uh, our next speaker has their hand raised, James Crowder. I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Good morning, can you all hear me? 
Yes, go ahead. You have three minutes. Uh, good morning. My name is James Crowder. I'm an attorney at Solari Reserve here in Sacramento. Uh, we represent several entities throughout the North, South, and Central Delta. Um, first, I would like to echo Miss Woolley and Miss Willie's comments regarding the request for an extension. Um, this DEIR is a, is a huge document, um, and like they said, um, with the appendices, it comes out to you know, 20,000 pages roughly, and it just takes a long time to get through all that, especially for, for smaller organizations. Um, so we also request that a 90-day extension be provided to meaningfully review and comment on this EIR. Um, additionally, uh, we recently requested modeling data from DWR um, that was used in the EIR and that was not provided. And we were told that we needed to go through uh, PRA requests. So that has extended um, kind of our timeline on, on commenting. And, and, we, and although we understand that uh, EIR doesn't have to contain all the data that's relied upon, uh, we do believe that it should be readily available upon request. So um, if DWR isn't going to um, you know, expediently give that information out, we would like the deadline to be extended so that we can go through the process that DWR is requiring from us. Um, additionally, uh, we believe that the alternatives provided in the EIR are not actually alternatives because they all are essentially the same thing. They're tunnel projects that export water from the Delta um, in, in one way or another. So therefore we ask that DWR, um, you know, do more to support local projects that decrease reliance on Delta exports because the Delta Reform Act requires that. And we think that the, this large amount of money being spent on this project could be better spent on other local projects that do more to recycle and reuse the water that's already there. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, I did want to check with Tom Williams if he is still wishing to make a comment. He had his hand raised earlier. Tom Williams, if you're still wishing to make a comment, please raise your hand. Or if you've called in by phone, press star nine to raise your hand. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, those are all of the speakers who have indicated that they'd like to make a verbal comment. While we won't be presenting any new or additional information, we will stay on the line until 11 o'clock to hear your verbal comments, and we have plenty of time remaining this morning to hear your comments. So if you have not already provided a comment and would like to, please use the raise hand feature located at the bottom of your Zoom platform to raise your hand or press star nine. Thank you. Okay, I see we have another speaker, uh, D. Rasmussen. I see your hand is raised. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. You have three minutes. Oh, um, I just want to echo the need for more time to review that document, the environmental impact report. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the verbal comment portion of today's meeting. If you would like to make a verbal comment, please raise your hand using the raise hand icon located at the bottom of your Zoom screen, or for call-in users, press star nine. While we won't be presenting any new or additional information, we will stay on the line until 11 o'clock to hear your verbal comments. I see we have a speaker in the queue. Uh, Martha, I'm going to ask you to um, unmute. Good morning, this is Martha Armas Kelly from Catholic Charities. Um, I'm, I'm in uh, agreement with several of the comments that have made, been made in, in um, hopes that folks will be given an ample amount of time to be able to engage. I understand that this is a public comment, but I am really remiss to say that um, there are a lot of people that would be commenting right now had they been given the opportunity and I would really strongly recommend more time to allow people, if you're looking at a document that's over 20 pages long and is in a language somewhat uh, of a higher register, I think it's only fair that you allow the public to really get an opportunity to, for us to even uh, as CBOs to be able to engage with the community and, and give them an opportunity to understand and break down the document. Um, this is obviously going to make some changes for our communities at large, and we need to be conscious and mindful of the fact that there are folks out there that, that are not aware of these changes that are happening. And perhaps the outreach that has been conveyed for these such sessions, sessions as today 
were not suffice in the sense that mo most folks would have been on this call had they known the gravity of the this type of decision making. And that's pretty much the end of my comment. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now check with our interpreters to see if we have any uh, participants in the Spanish or Cantonese channels wishing to make a verbal comment. Reina and Nathan, if you have anyone in your rooms requesting to make a comment in Spanish or Cantonese, please raise your hand. Okay, um, I, our interpreters have let me know we do not have any commenters in the Spanish or Cantonese interpretation rooms wishing to make a verbal comment. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the public comment portion of today's meeting and we have plenty of time remaining if you would like to make a verbal comment. To do so, please use the raise hand icon located at the bottom of your Zoom platform or for call in only users, press star nine to raise your hand so we can add you to the speaker list and you can provide a verbal comment today. While we won't be presenting any new or additional information today, we will stay on the line until 11 o'clock to hear your verbal comments. Um, and we also currently have 175 people participating in this meeting. Thank you. Okay, I see we have a hand raised. Patrick Flynn, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Good morning, my name is Patrick Flynn out of Trinity County. I'd just like to request additional time for review of the DEIR as well, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, I see we have another hand raised. Catherine Simmons, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Yes, I'm going to join the group. I think we need more time it, to read and fully digest what has been written. As said before, this is very complicated. Many people are affected by this project. And I think we need to be given maximum time extension of this time period pat way past October 27th is requested. Um, and I submit that uh, very well. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the public comment portion of today's meeting. If you would like to make a verbal public comment, please raise your hand using the raise hand feature located at the bottom of your Zoom platform or for call in only users, press star nine. While we won't be presenting any new or additional information at today's meeting, we will stay on the line until 11 o'clock a.m. to hear your verbal comments. Thank you. Okay, I see we have another speaker in the queue. Tom Burke, I see your hand is raised. I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Hi, uh, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to comment on the EIR. I have some very significant concerns about this project. One being, despite how this is being promoted, the project will not provide any additional storage or provide water supply during drought periods. So I don't see how it's gonna really help us in, those, in that aspect. A review of the project documents seems to show that its primary purpose is to provide additional fresh water to south of Delta farmers and Southern California, and to do this by sacrificing the Delta. The project would divert a significant amount of fresh water under the Delta. By doing this, you're basically starving the Delta of fresh water, which already has significant salinity issues. You cannot remove this much fresh water without having impacts. And basically the project itself is an underground version of the peripheral canal. I see very little that's different about it beside it being buried. I would like to further emphasize the importance of extending the review period for the document. To this date, we have received over 39,000 files that describe the modeling for the project. And that does not include all of the modeling files yet. We received most of these files at the end of last week. There's no way we can intelligently evaluate these files in, in the remaining time for this review. So I would like to ask that this review be extended at a minimum of an additional 90 days so we could properly review the project. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the public comment portion of today's meeting. If you would like to make a verbal comment today, please use the raise hand feature located at the bottom of your Zoom platform or press star nine. While we won't be presenting any new or additional information today, we will stay on the line until 11 a.m. to hear your verbal comments. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I see we have another speaker in the queue. Robert Nonman, I see your hand is raised. I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Hello. Yes, go ahead. We can hear you. You have three minutes. Hello, my name is Robert Nauman, a private citizen and um, listening to the, anyway, I just, I am shocked that the DRE, the, the, the DAR would be increasing water flows. Historically, water flows, out of the Sacramento 
is uh, has been historically unsustainable. And the fact that we're uh, going to be increasing that, I find uh, untenable. We need to use this money from these uh, from this project to uh, create efficiencies and hold agriculture as uh, water use uh, uh, create efficiencies and also for urban and cities and rural efficiency as well. Uh, our water is expensive. We should uh, hold it as a, a value, not as something to just give away. I um, agree with the Native Americans that we must treat them lightly. We have not historically in California treated them lightly. It's about time that we do so and put their names and their needs on the top of the list. I also agree with everyone that uh, 90 days for this size of document is, uh, is an inappropriate amount of response for the length of this, uh, the, the length of this uh, project to date. I thought we were going down to one tunnel and now we're back to three tunnels. And uh, although we do need to have some water infrastructure strengthening, I do not believe that uh, putting a tunnel and consuming more water to the south from uh, the Sacramento River is the correct answer. We need to work on efficiency, 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 and not just keep using this water as, it is, as if it is free. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the verbal uh, public comment portion of today's meeting. If you would like to make a verbal comment, please raise your hand using the raise hand icon located at the bottom of your Zoom platform, or for call in only users, press star nine. While we won't be presenting any new or additional information, we will stay on the line until 11 o'clock AM to hear your verbal comments. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I will check with our interpreters to see if we have anyone in the Spanish or Cantonese interpretation rooms today wishing to make a verbal comment. Reina and Nathan, please raise your hands if you have any participants in the Spanish or Cantonese rooms wishing to make a verbal comment today. Thank you. Okay, I have see we have someone else in the speaker queue. Ginny Madsen, I see your hand is raised. I'm going to ask you to unmute. So my name is Ginny Madsen. I'm an elderly woman, third generation Californian. My great grandfather's barn still stands outside of Patterson. My grandfather, one of them, was a dry land farmer on the Altamont who gave up there because of the drought that came in in the 1920s. Um, Another, another grandfather was a, a water engineer who worked for the Bureau of Reclamation. And I had uncles who worked on Zone 7. I give this, I say this because this is my context. That is who I am here speaking for because I do not like public speaking. But I have to go to the library to even look at one chapter in this EIR because you, it takes a, a, a fast speed to even be able to open it. I can't call in from there. I can't download the chapter from there. I mean, this is a massive document. I have tried to read a few chapters, 10, which is on seismicity, and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't understand why every single alternative was judged as less than significant. There should be some other rating that indicates you, you don't know because the Sacramento drainage has been there for 100,000 years. I've got a degree in geology from the 70s at a state school. And I know that Mess, the, it's the structure that will go into putting in the tunnel that is seismically vulnerable. The Sacramento drainage has survived many, many earthquakes, but the, you don't know. You Every one of those is judged less than significant. And this is so short-sighted, so, so blind. It's just like you're just checking off the boxes to say, oh, we, we, we looked at this. this it, the document is too huge even for 
organizations to really review, as I have heard today. And you're not given enough time. I don't know how many years were spent writing this. Um, it's it's well written, but it is blind. It does not look at the actual conditions that will be caused by this. No project is the only one that makes any sense to me. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not seeing anyone else with their hand raised right now. Again, we will stay on the line until 11 o'clock to hear your verbal comments. Anna Swenson, I see your hand is now raised. Uh, we'll add you to the queue. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hi, my name is Anna Swenson. I'm an outreach coordinator and community member of Clarksburg. I've been involved with the tunnel project. Now this is our third goat rodeo round with DWR with this terrible plan. The plan is slated to completely destroy the way of life here in the Clark in, in the Delta and in Clarksburg and Walnut Grove and especially Hood. The project does not take into account all of the catastrophic impacts that will happen to the people who are, are usually multi-generational farm, farming families. It doesn't take into account what it's going to do to the multi-billion dollar agricultural industry out here with truck traffic and impediments on, you know, being able to harvest and be able to plant as they have for generations. It doesn't take into account the complete and total devastation of some of the most beautiful prime ag land and conservation land that is used to support cranes and other wildlife, including the Swainson hawk. It doesn't take into account how disruptive and actually terminal the noise and the pollution will be to the people who live here in the Delta and the people who visit the Delta. The project is something that will cost our children, not the 16 billion or the 20 billion or whatever the initial estimate, but it'll cost them probably two or three times more and will be a debt that they will forever be saddled with to, to trap water at the Northern end of the Delta basically a water grab, to trap water at the north end of the delta and send it south, bypassing the estuary, which will kill it in all frames, in all ways. It will kill. It will kill the people. It will kill the, the land. It will kill the wildlife. And this tunnel project has got to be stopped. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't create any new water. It doesn't even create cheap water. And the fact that these agencies like Zone 7 or Metropolitan are still on board to put their ratepayers at risk by financing and by um, supporting this project is actually, in my opinion, criminal. This is the same exact project as it's always been. It's, it doesn't matter whether it's one tunnel or two. It's equally destructive to our communities. And we need to stop this madness and stop spending money on something that doesn't work. We need the no tunnel alternative and we need to point our, our direction towards recycled water projects, towards projects that will actually create water rather than stealing water from one area and sending it to another. Thank you for your time and absolutely no tunnels. Save the Delta. Thank you for your comments. Okay, our next speaker is Nicholas Wild. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hello. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. You have three minutes. Uh, thanks for your time um, on being able to comment about this. Uh, there was a couple things I noticed with the draft EIR. Um, I'm a resident of Trinity County. And when looking at the fish and aquatic resources uh, analysis, so there was nothing that talked about the Trinity River um, below the dam where the water diversions heading down the Sacramento, a huge source uh, is from the Trinity River. Um, and undoubtedly, this project is gonna create more of a strain on the Trinity resources. Um, so I'd like to see a better analysis on what's gonna be happening on the Trinity River. Another, uh, something else that I have not been able to see, although, echoing others it's a massive document to try and review in a short amount of time uh, more time would be great but i don't see anything in regards to the no project alternative 
that would speak to the water policies for the rest of California, such as uh, conservation um, requirements and building codes for things like composting toilets. I'd like to see more in the environmental impact report that would address alternatives to this tunnel water source for Southern California, um, including other policies that have nothing to do with the waters and rivers and are based in conservation. Um, those were the two things that stood out to me about the environmental impact report draft. And uh, I think the no project alternative is the only sensible option here. And I see the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the public comment portion of today's meeting. If you would like to make a verbal public comment, please use the raise hand icon located at the bottom of your Zoom platform, or for Colin only users, press star nine. While we won't be presenting any new or additional information today, we will stay on the line until 11 o'clock a.m. to hear your verbal comments. Thank you. Okay, I see we have a call-in user wishing to make a comment. Call-in user ending in 1225. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Again, call-in user ending in 1225. You should hear a prompt asking you to unmute. Thank you. Um, my name is Heinrich Albert. Uh, I, I want to speak to uh, the operations of the proposed uh, Delta conveyance. To the best of my understanding, all of these uh, proposed alternatives uh, under, under the current operations would result in actually taking more water out of the Delta, that the Delta outflows would actually be uh, decreased and that the exports from the Delta would be increased. That just seems totally unacceptable to me. Uh, it, the, the science on this has so clear and has been clear for a long time that in the Delta and in the tributaries of the Delta, if we are able to, if, if we are going to protect the public trust resources and protect the fish and other wildlife that depends uh, on, on the Delta and its tributaries, we need greater flows, not less flows, not greater exports. I think in light of that, all of the proposed alternatives with the exception of the no project are just going to make this already bad situation worse. And I urge you to go back to the drawing board, at least with regard to operations and the amount of water to be diverted from this system. I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the public comment portion of today's meeting. If you'd like to make a verbal public comment, please use the raise hand icon located at the bottom of your Zoom platform, or for call-in only users, press star nine. While we won't be presenting any new or additional information, we will stay on the line until 11 o'clock to hear your verbal comments. Thank you. I see we have another speaker in the queue, Nicola Lackick. I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. You have three minutes. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to say a few words. <clears throat> I am not resident on that area. I am just on different end, uh, Salton Sea area here, India, California. But I, I'm, I see that people um, uh, oppose that project. I'm learning right now just from this meeting. Um, well, I would like to say. Actually, I need, before I forgot to say, I need information who is in charge of the design, if I can have it. I'm graduate engineer architect. I'm inventor of several breakthrough technologies in energy industry, including solar, hydro, geothermal. And I do have system that can use salty water or water from this a bay later on after it's used I know its salinity is less there, but and can produce uh, by using solar energy can produce potable water, depending how many of 
uh, modular systems can be used. It's amazing, amazing project. It's something that can be used in any coastal area where is present sun and ocean, like Cabo San Lucas and here in Southern Sea. That's my proposal for the restoration of the Southern Sea, where we can use salty water of the ocean using sun and geothermal option, both options, and having byproduct potable water. And also salt uh, concentrated brine can be used for extraction of lithium. It's amazing uh, concept. And if you can send me some information, uh, the people who is in charge of the project, I'd like to send um, a few information about that, that could be incorporated that very well. Uh, uh, um, even if that project continue or not, I see opposition, but um, we need water and I can do that. Um, potable water, so without really depleting a Delta. Um, but I would appreciate if uh, somebody, I, 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 I took an address for comments and I see deadline, I make shot for it, but uh, how can I get information of the people who are in charge of the project? They might, they might consider that. I'm busy with some other projects. I cannot be full time there, but uh, at least I can teach them what can be done. But thank you for now. I, I, again, if you can send me somehow uh, information, I could I could put my information on chat maybe. Uh, and uh, but thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the public comment session of today's meeting. If you would like to make a verbal public comment, please use the raise hand icon located at the bottom of your Zoom platform, or for call and only users, press star nine to raise your hand. While we won't be presenting any new or additional information, we will stay on the line till 11 o'clock to hear your verbal comments. And with that, I would like to ask our interpreters if there's anyone in the Spanish or Cantonese interpretation rooms today who are wishing to make a verbal comment. Reina and Nathan, if you have participants in your rooms who are wishing to make a Spanish or Cantonese comment, please raise your hand. Thank you. Okay, Don, I see your hand is raised again. Um, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Don, your line is unmuted. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. You have three minutes. Thank you very much. This is a great opportunity to um, comment. Uh, my name is Don Lynch. I have a background in marine science. Had to let that dream die at one point and do construction, but I still understand these processes. And I studied quite extensively about the whole Delta Water thing, Delta Reform Act. Uh, what I hear mostly the state talk about is a it's a um, common, the, the two part, I can't remember the words, but common goals of supply plus protection. Um, I don't hear enough about the fact that the state's required to reduce its dependency on Delta water and taking water out of the Sacramento River above the Delta is sleight of hand. I mean, I don't, not not making accusations, but it's it's not it. You're still taking water away from the delta. The um, anti-degradation policy applies here. You take you let less water flow through the delta. You're going to have a greater problem. It, in any um, restorations that they propose, uh, EPA water has a very clear definition of uh, aquatic restoration, and this doesn't meet that either. Uh, just from scientific perspectives, it's, it's a bad idea. And there are alternatives and we're in a new time. You know, we started this thing thinking, okay, we just need to make it easier to get water south. Well, these, uh, this global warming thing is worse and worse and worse. And the amount of water taken out is not sustainable. It's at present marginal when there were shortages, Southern California got by just fine without water. Southern California, like Metropolitan, those water agencies want to provide their their customers with cheap water. Cheap water is not a concern anymore. I mean, we're 
Water is like gold now, and we really need to protect that. They do have, I know, desalinization is expensive, but so is pumping water that far, and so is um, 20 some miles of tunnel. Um, I, I really think that we need to focus on alternatives. There's a great new plan to upgrade the screens, the fish screens in the, the uh, Clifton Court Four Bay. Sorry, I'm a little slow with words this morning. And I, I think that there's so many good alternatives that it's, this is really just not, it's not good for the Delta. It's not good for the, the traffic that would be there. These quaint little river hamlets are gonna lose their flavor. It's just, you know, the amount of material hauled out of there, there's just so many things that's- That's time. Okay. Please wrap up your comments. All right, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the verbal public comment portion of today's meeting. If you would like to make a verbal comment today, please use the raise hand icon located at the bottom of your Zoom platform or press star nine if you're a call and only user. While we won't be presenting any new or additional information today, we will stay on the line until 11 o'clock Pacific uh, to hear any verbal comments you might have. Okay, I see we have someone else in the queue. Uh, Whaley 500, your, your hand keeps going up and lowering. If you would like to make a comment, please raise your hand. Okay, Whaley 500, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Can I do my three minutes? Yes, I can hear you now. Go ahead. You have three minutes. Okay, my name is Dan Whaley. I am the uh, chairman of the Delta Legacy Communities uh, Corporation that represents the 11 Delta Legacy Communities. Uh, in the Sacramento Delta. <clears throat> and um, there's some very difficult ability to even understand and review the uh, draft EIR. And uh, we requested that they give us some additional time. And the response was maybe. Well, the problem with that response is, is that the time is clicking and and our ability to really even analyze the environmental impact report is uh, uh, unavailable and we're running out of time. Uh, the other problem is, is that the um, uh, science upon which they're basing this latest environmental impact report has not been updated to accurately reflect the uh, seismic problems and other issues that may exist uh, on the Delta. Uh, and finally, there is no real good cost benefit analysis. The whole purpose of uh, building this tunnel is to make it uh, financially uh, attractive. Metropolitan Water District is not going to finance this project uh, if the costs are um, as high as they seem to be without any guarantee of water. And then the final thing that the state of California needs to do is examine the system that exists. They already have a water conveyance system. It's called the Sacramento River. And what they need to do is maintain the existing levees, not allow them to become in disrepair, and to bolster those levees that can then transfer the water depending on how much or how little water we have. If we have extra water, great. If we don't, great. At least the system, the infrastructure will exist to maintain it. These intakes and this tunnel will do nothing but destroy the Delta. And if the Delta Stewardship Council does their job, this project will never be certified. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the public comment portion of today's meeting. If you'd like to make a verbal public comment today, please use the raise hand icon located at the bottom of your Zoom platform, or if you're a call and only user, press star nine. While we won't be presenting any new or additional information today, we will stay on the line until 11 o'clock to hear your verbal comments. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have another speaker in the queue. Uh, Dan Batcher, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hi, this is Dan Barker. I'm an independent journalist that's covered fish, environmental justice, and water 
issues <clears throat> for four years for a number of publications, different versions of this same gigantic and wasteful public works project, the Peripheral Canal, the Bay Delta Conservation Plan, and the California Water Fix, and now the single Delta conveyance have cast a dark, toxic shadow over California water policy since it was first decisively rejected by California voters in November 1982 as the peripheral canal. Supporters of the tunnel claim the tunnel will protect the reliability of water transport infrastructure, address the impacts of sea level rise, and improve the Delta's aquatic conditions. In fact, the project will do none of these things, instead hastening the extinction of Sacramento winter and spring run Chinook salmon, Central Valley steelhead, the Delta and long fence smelt, and the green sturgeon. According to a recent blog post by Doug O'BG of NRDC, the Department of Water Resources proposed operations of the Delta Tunnel are significantly less protective of the environment and fish than the operations that the National Marine Fishery Service and other agencies required for the proposed twin tunnel project only a few years ago under the California water fix. As a result, all of the alternatives in the DIR, as it is now, substantially increased water exports from the Delta on average by approximately 500,000 acre feet per year including significant increases in water diversions in dry and critically dry years. Um, all of the available science reveals that the Delta Tunnel will in fact hasten the extinction of Delta and long fin smell, Sacramento winter run and Chinook salmon, Central Valley steelhead, green sturgeon and other fish. The Delta Tunnel is based on the irrational premise that diverting more Sacramento River out of the Delta will somehow restore the Delta. But I don't know of any water diversion project in world or US history where taking more water out of a river estuary has restored that river or estuary. The, the Delta project, if construction, if if constructed would be no different from previous water um, projects that divert water throughout the world. Thank you for listening to me today. Thank you for your comments. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the public comment portion of today's meeting. If you'd like to make a verbal comment today, please use the raise hand feature located at the bottom of your Zoom screen or press star nine if you're a colon only user to raise your hand. While we won't be presenting any new or additional information, we will stay on the line until 11 o'clock to hear any verbal comments. At this time, I would like to ask our translators if there are any uh, participants in the Spanish or the Cantonese rooms wishing to make a verbal comment. Reina and Nathan are Spanish and Cantonese interpreters. Would you please raise your hand if you have anyone in your rooms wishing to make a verbal comment? Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have someone else in the queue. Linda Hale, I see your hand is raised. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Um, with so much water being extracted from the Delta area and the river, how will you be able to control contaminants that will concentrate in, in those areas? Is there any planning for, for that? Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, our next speaker is Jan Warren. Jan, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Thanks, Jennifer. <clears throat> Jan Warren from Walnut Creek. Um, I have been in the process for <laughs> the, these water wars uh, and following this for a long time. And uh, this year, because of the drought, I've already taken out my lawns, I've done um, you know, my low flow uh, toilets, I've done all kinds of things. Now it's triage uh, where I live, uh, uh, what's gonna live and what's gonna die. Um, and in the meantime, we're still allowing uh, people to put in more water intense um, <clears throat> trees that uh, they, they get almonds and pistachios and then they sh export them. Um, we need a healthy delta 
to help with sea level rise. It, it, it's critical. We can't just keep uh, going higher up the, the river and seeing uh, how we can get more water to store somewhere when the amount is already too, that we're taking out of the rivers is too much for them to be healthy to begin with. Uh, you've seen the pictures of the dry uh, riverbanks uh, in the Rio Grande, uh, Colorado. And um, there's too much uh, life in the Delta. It's such a special place that we need to uh, restore it and save it for prosperity for seven generations. And uh, this, this is another killer project that, that, that is being proposed. I uh, support the comments of Dan Boucher. I looked last night at the um, EIR. There's 30 chapters. <laughs> I, I uh, obviously will have to pick the ones I want to focus on. Uh, because um, I don't have enough time for all of them. Um, it's just really sad that we're just going to end up with more of money, uh, the big money, uh, trying to get the, the water grab. Uh, Santa Clara Water District thinks that they can just buy their way into more storage and more water all over the place. And their comment is, well, we have fish in our, our area too. Um, the Native uh, Indigenous folks have helped us maintain um, the land and the air and the water for generations. And uh, it's really an affront to them for us to continue to, to desecrate this um, land that really um, was given to us for uh, conservation. But we need more recycled watering. We need more thoughtful process. Uh, the algae blooms uh, and all the problems are going to end up uh, going from the water to the air, and we already have air pollution problems that are affecting the health of people all over the Bay Area. So I ask you to uh, reject the, the, this should be a no project, and we should uh, do sensible things. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, Kyle Griffith, I see your hand is raised. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hi there, can you folks hear me? <clears throat> yes, go ahead. You have three minutes. Excellent. My name is Kyle Griffith. Uh, I'm here speaking today on behalf of the Californians for Water Security Coalition. Uh, California's water issues are well documented and well known, but I think Chief among Kyle, them, yes. I apologize for interrupting. I will ask you to slow down for our court reporter and our interpreters. No problem. Thank you. Uh, California's water issues are well documented and well known, but chief among them is that we are unable currently to adequately move water when it's available to us. Uh, for example, we know that if the Delta conveyance project had been in operation at the end of last year, when we saw record breaking storm events, we could have moved and stored enough water for more than 2 million Californians, but we lacked the infrastructure to enable us to do so. Uh, I think it's hard to say that we can, you know, conserve our way out of this drought. It's not a matter of conservation versus recycling versus conveyance. It's an all of the above approach. We need everything possible in order for us to prepare for the new hydrological conditions that California is facing due to the effects of climate change. This project is absolutely necessary in order for us to ensure that our main water distribution infrastructure that provides water for more than two thirds of the state does not become a stranded asset. If we're not able to move the water when it is available, then the entire state will suffer. Conserving and developing new local water resources is crucial, but we still need to invest in conveyance. It's the only way to make all of the proposed solutions work most effectively. We encourage the state to move forward with the Bethany alignment because it is a viable solution to improve the reliability of our water distribution network. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we have a few minutes remaining this morning to hear your verbal comments. If you'd like to make a verbal comment, please use the raised hand icon located at the bottom of your screen, or for call and only users, press star nine. Thank you. Okay, I see we have another speaker in the queue, Susan Patrick, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. I'm unmuted. Okay, we can hear you, Susan. Uh, this is Patrick, uh, Patrick uh, Porgans, and I'm telephoning because I want to make it clear that I'm totally opposed to this project. I, I don't understand why the Department of Water Resources continues to say that they're improving the Delta conveyance system. 
there is no delta conveyance system. Yes, you have pumps at the other end of the delta, but back in 1960, under Water Code 12934, they authorized the delta master levies. The Department of Water Resources spent that money elsewhere because the project was under finance and contractually overcommitted to begin with. Now, with that said, the project that you're proposing is going to put the entire water supply for all those people that are dependent on the state water project for water. And the reason why I say that is because the department is not taking into account an arch storm event. And we had several um, meetings and uh, webinars discussing this problem and issued some press releases relating to this arc storm event, which is going to happen. I suggest that the department go online and look up arc storm events. I believe uh, Dr. Swain was involved and also the USGS. Uh, the problem that we have here is the Department of Water Resources is trying to make up for the uh, its over contracted project. It uh, contracted for more water than it could provide. It's going to take you know, 10 to 12 or 15 years to build that uh, tunnel. In the interim period, we're going to experience an arc storm that's going to wipe out that tunnel. I suggest that the Department of Water Resources starts being honest and explain to the people what's really going on. The major conflict for the last 60 years has been because the Department of Water Resources failed to provide the authorized facilities that were approved by the voters and the, uh, the legislature back in 1960. So on that note, I think the Department of Water Resources should you know, reduce their title, title A entitlements and start being more realistic about the amount of water it can provide. We'll be having a series of webinars in the near future explaining why the public should be more concerned about this project than the department's letting us know. Thank you for the opportunity for allowing me this three minutes. Thank you for your comments. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now 10.59 a.m. and this virtual public hearing will now conclude. At the peak of today's meeting, we had 205 participants. We have two more virtual public hearings scheduled to take verbal comments, Thursday, September 22nd at 12 p.m. and Wednesday, September 28th at 5.30 p.m. Meeting information is available at deltaconveyanceproject.com. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your input and involvement in this process. If you need further assistance, please visit the website or contact us at Delta Conveyance at water.ca.gov or by phone at 1-866-924-9955. Again, thank you for your participation. This hearing is adjourned.